Let's look, look at uh, the area of uh, one of the major challenges in the Niger Delta, uh, which I can imagine takes away from the mandate that you have at this time. You're barely six months uh, on that table, on, mm. on that, in that office. Yes. Is the issue of security in that region. Baramatu, for instance, you do remember that place, has given an ultimatum to the government and is actually demanding uh, as much as 900 million naira for damages to that community. How do you see this happening? What does NDDC do to try to bring about an ease in restiveness in the Niger Delta? My take on that is that um, the demand by that community is, for me is an invitation to the state government, uh, to the federal government to engage with the community. And that's why I, I want to very sincerely commend the efforts of the federal government as led by His Excellency the Vice President the new Niger Delta initiative, which has been led by the Vice President in the last um, couple of months, has taken him to all the states of the Niger Delta and to various communities in the Niger Delta. And you would have noticed that because of the high-level engagement led by His Excellency the Vice President personally, there's been a lot of um, um, improvement in the security situation in the Niger Delta of late. Um, my, my take also is that by the time what the Baramatu community wants is a lot more of these engagements, some more recognition. And if you've noticed, part of the things that have come out of the engagement of the Vice President is the commencement, the order for the commencement of academic activities in the Maritime University in Baramatu. Mm -hmm. That is something that the community is very happy about. It's something that you can see that brings a lot of... Um, advantages to the community which, they, which, which, which they've been craving for and um, I'm sure we can still do a lot more. The NDDC is presently um, considering the construction of a, a road that would lead from, from the Wari area mm. through Escravos to Baramatu to the site of the uh, Maritime University. There's no road to that um, neighborhood right now and I remember when we mentioned this the other day um, the, vice, the deputy governor of the state was there, and then when we visited the state governor last week, we also invited the Delta State Government to partner with us to develop that road and build that very um, much-needed infrastructure. These are the things um, that I believe, if done, uh, would help to ease the tension in Baramatu and, of course, in other um, oil-producing communities in the Niger Delta. You would agree with me that, um, to a very large extent, um, um, youth restiveness and, and insecurity is uh, basically as, as a result of poverty. Mm. Poverty. And that's why NDDC is doing a lot of um, skills acquisition and uh, training and, um, and um, you know, empowering the young people of the region in economic activities that would be sustainable over a long period of time. You know, there's so much of this that we're doing presently now to help to lift up the economic um, well-being of the region, create jobs for the, for the youths and uh, lead to general prosperity. One, and, one of the major things, uh, permit me to just butt in there, one of the major things that uh, just about everyone is concerned is that you've had so much abandoned projects in the Niger Delta, about 6,000 of them uh, last week check-in. Now, how are you able to you're coming in new. How do you intend to fill up this gap? Well, that's, that's a huge challenge. And um, when we came in, the present board and management, when we assumed, we, we knew we, we had a feel of what the issues were with NDDC and the Niger Delta. And so we came up with a very ambitious reform agenda. We call it the four hours. We want to uh, reform the balance sheet of the commission. I mean, we have presently um, a balance sheet size of about 1.3 trillion um, naira um, value of projects that are on, ongoing presently. Um, we, we want to reform the governance systems, you know, um, the ways of running the commission, the way things are done generally. And we believe that if you reform the governance systems, you take away um, some of the discretion that the executives have, it would help to, to run the place a little bit more efficiently, to reduce corruption and so on and so forth. We, we want to restore the Commission back to its core mandate. And then finally, we want to generally recommit ourselves to doing what is right and proper mm -hmm. at all times. Now, this is a reform agenda that this um, present board and management has come up with, and that's what I'm driving. Um, we believe sincerely 
that um, if you take each of these uh, agen um, items and, and elaborate on them, which I can but if you give me the time, but if you, if you work seriously on them as we intend to, you will see that to a very large extent we will shrink the balance sheet of NDDC. I'll tell you, for, for example, we, we came in and we discovered that um, since um, the year 2000, when the commission was formed, there were some projects, uh, contracts that were awarded. And most of them, some of them, the contractors have not even mobilized to site. And if you, if you, if you see the, the award letters that are given out, it gives a, a time frame. If you don't report to site within a certain number of days, the commission reserves the right to terminate the contract. But somehow, no one has bothered to to use that clause. What, what about what about the uh, the contracts that have been awarded and have been mobilised, uh -huh. and the works have not been done? What are you going to do about it? We have we're already in the process. We are working with the um, office of uh, the special advisor to the uh, special advisor to the president on prosecution and contractors, NDDC contractors who collected money and have not done the work for which they were mobilized for would definitely be prosecuted. We've already received over, uh, we, we, you know, some of them, the ones that were backed by banks with, um, um, with the uh, performance guarantees, with, uh, you know, we've, we've already approached the banks and um, we've received now um, over 60 billion have been recovered from banks. Um, from advance payment that were given to contractors who have not performed. Okay, but we are going ahead, we are, we are cancelling in, in the next week or so, we'll come up with a list that would, would be able to terminate projects worth over 200 billion. Mm. And these are projects that were either wrongly procured, that you know, didn't follow through um, the due process for procurement, or the projects that were awarded and the contractors have not mobilized when the time that they were supposed to have mobilized have elapsed. Is this new thinking sustainable? It is very sustainable, of course, yes, it is. It's highly sustainable. I mean, why do you, I would prefer, personally, I would prefer to have a hundred projects that are performing than have 2,000 or 6,000 projects that are not performing. What's the point having projects littered all over the place and you don't even have the money to fund them? You rather concentrate on a few projects, get them well funded, supervise them properly, get them completed, and get let the communities take advantage and benefit from from the those projects. That's my view, and that's what we are committed to doing. So, in terms of being sustainable, absolutely.